What's up, Lucas? How you doing? How you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, you're ranked number 10 in the division stack with a lot of experienced fighters, none of them having less than 12 professional fights. And then you have guys like Pitbull at the top and Weichel with over 40 fights. How do you feel like you stack up against those ranked above you in the division? Uh, you know, I'm appreciative to be, you know, in, the, in that line of guys. You know, those are guys I, I grew up watching, uh, you know, which really wasn't all that long ago. But uh, uh, I mean, I, I'm excited to get in there with them at some point in time, you know, but I'm also, I've said this before. And I think those words went overlooked, but I, I'm in no rush, you know, to, to go anywhere. Uh, I'm happy getting fights, you know, as, as cool as it is to be the only undefeated guy in the rankings and the youngest guy in the organization to be ranked. Uh, you know, I think it's also like, you know, I, I like getting fights in, you know, I, I got single digit wins as cool as it is to have no losses, you know? So uh, I think it's awesome. I, th I think it's cool to be recognized in that uh, group of athletes. You know, they're all fantastic, you know, and I have a ton of respect for all of them, but, uh, you know, I'm just appreciative to be there. Anybody would be happy to be in the rankings, but would you agree that it came as a, a little bit of a surprise? Uh, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I, I was in no, no rush to be there. You know, I'm just, I'm just happy getting fights in. I'm just, I'm just happy fighting guys. And, uh, you know, as, as much as I've been undefeated and then I've won all my fights and you know, I've got, you know, you want to add amateur, I got 10 fights, you know, I might have, I got 400 plus wrestling matches, jiu-jitsu matches, but you know, I, I got 10 fights. So, uh, you know, I like getting more fights in and more fights in. It's definitely something I didn't expect until, uh, maybe something a little more like this year, you know, maybe a little, just a tad longer, another fight or so. Uh, but you know, I'm not complaining. Speaking of expectations, are you expecting cheers when you walk out? You're, you're uh, fighting a guy named Josh San Diego, very close to San Diego. Yeah. So I'm happy to find out he's not from San Diego. I was like, Oh, I'm so screwed. Like there's no <laughs> way anybody cheers for me. Uh, but he's, he's from like San Jose or something. It's not even real. I was like, Oh, we're fine. We're good. So, uh, as long as we're not fighting in Connecticut again, I'm stoked. So <laughs> would you rather be cheered in Connecticut or booed in California? I don't know if I'm, am I allowed to curse? Yes. Fuck, fuck Connecticut, bro. I hate that state so much and I'm doubling down on it, bro. I think I think the UK blew a 13 to 1 lead and I think they should have kept Connecticut. I hate that place so much. <laughs> I'm so over fighting there. I'm so happy to be somewhere else, bro. I I was born like 15 minutes from here. Like I'm I'm so happy to be uh somewhere else. I might get booed a little bit, but like fuck it. Like it's not even I don't thrive off that, so whatever. Thank you, man. We'll take our next question from Connecticut's Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i i personally I, you know i can understand where you're coming from uh you know you're you're from out here it's okay um Are you just for me dog <laughs> <laughs> so um one thing i will say though i have been there for some of your best performances inside of that mohegan sun casino and I've always thought that you are one of the most exciting fighters, especially with some of your submissions that you're able to just pull out of almost nowhere. Talk to me a little bit, a little bit about how that stuff happens and how hard you train to be capable of, you know, putting guys in those positions in, you know, in no time. You know, it's um, years and years of of this stuff. You know, it's, it's I've I'm halfway right now to my second stripe on my black belt, you know, in jujitsu, you know, I've been wrestling a long time and it's, uh, it's something that I'm no longer actively, you know, I'm going to put this guy in this submission. Sometimes I just let him, sometimes I make throw mistakes. You know, I, there's some guys that have put themselves in those positions, you know, um, they just posted a clip of me fighting, uh, Skibiki, um, two fights ago in Connecticut. And, uh, like he put himself in a position that he shouldn't have put himself into. Uh, Lugo was someone who I, I coerced into putting himself into a bad position. You know, those guys, I've never had to muscle them into somewhere they don't want to be. You know, I've, I've given them an opening that they shouldn't have taken, you know, things like that. I've, uh, you know, I've, I've played, I've worked that game. I've, I've fine tuned that game for a very long time. And I think there's aspects of it and there's things that I've worked, I work on at the gym and setups for things I work on at the gym and things I've done for forever that I've never actually been able to put into practice. You know, there's things that I've never really uh, seen in the light of day outside of my training group, which, you know, I'm cool with that. You know, I'm, I'm cool having uh, secrets here and there, even though they're, to me, they're nothing new to other people. They'd be something that no one's ever seen before. So, um, no, I mean, hard training, you know, hard training. I've been doing jiu-jitsu every day since I was a kid. And uh, it's something that I, I have an understanding of now um, and have had an understanding of. Thank you. Sorry about connecting. <laughs> Santiago. Hi, Lucas. Thank you for the time. 
Is your father the West Side Strangler with you as well? And how important has he been for your preparation to this fight? And is he the main man who orchestrates your fight camps? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. He is my head coach. Um, and yes, yeah. I mean, he's a West Side Strangler, uh, you know, straight out of California here. Uh, but yeah, he orchestrates my camps. He orchestrates everything. He is my coach. And uh, having the experience of someone who fought for so long and fought for so long in the growing blueprint of the sport you know he didn't fight in nowadays where things are kind of how they are now you know there were no suspensions and things like that you know you could fight a couple <laughs> a night you could fight weekend to weekend you know those you know those uh things were different you used to be able to show up and ask for a different rule set you know there was different those different things back then so there's definitely a level of experience there that uh i don't have and that i am incapable of ever possessing so um you know it's definitely beneficial um to my training to my camp and, and to everything yeah, i used to fight in pride man that's so awesome yeah i'm a big admirer of your dad and all of your professional fights have come inside the bellator cage and you finish 90 percent of them i have a feeling that the company sees you as you know a, a big prospect you have a big future here just like they build up aj mckee i kind of see something similar happening happening with you do you feel this as well lucas and are you happy to be here with bellator uh, I'm super happy to be here at Bellator. You know, I, I appreciate everything they've done for me. And, uh, you know, I, yeah, I really love being here. And the Agent McKee route is definitely something I've looked at since I was an amateur. You know, I do like that, um, that way of going about things. Um, as, as much as I love this particular fighter, I don't like the way he does it fine now. I don't like the way he came in. Uh, Pico was someone who came in, I think, with zero fights. Who was like, I'll fight for the belt. And then he kind of had a tough, you know, going about. And now he has an awesome career going and he's fantastic. And so I really like the AJ route. You know, he fought one of my old teammates, actually. Um, but that's definitely the blueprint that we looked at when I was younger. And uh, definitely the blueprint that I have made my best attempt to stick to uh, so far in my career. Danny Segura. Lucas, I've, I've never been to Connecticut. If you could explain to me why does it suck so much? There's nothing there, bro. Besides Mohegan Sun, and it's just old people melting, right? Like, they're just, like, sewn into the seats, just spending pennies. There's nothing there, bro. And I was, like, I was trying to find food for after the weigh-in, you know, anything mainstream. Because it's, like, you ever... A pizza capital of the world, what, Chicago? I was just there, bro. Like, it's not even... And Chicago, I would never talk shit about Chicago, for starters, because if I walked outside, I'd get Swiss cheesed, right? But like, I can't, no, nah, Connecticut, who's going to fight me? It's just old people. It's a, it's a highway to cooler places. There's nothing there. I, whatever. You're, you're cool. But, <laughs> but it's not, I wouldn't ever go back. <laughs> and it's like, dude. And like, so I, I have, I hop the morning of my fights. I have a breakfast sampler, no, no syrup, right? No bacon, pancakes, sausage, eggs, right? A little bit of coffee. I love that shit. All right. There's not a IHOP in the state limits. I have to drive to Massachusetts or I have to drive to New York. And I was like, bro, like this is the most American breakfast place ever. Dude, it was just like, I was also just sick of being there. I fought there four times and I kept being locked in the casino and shit. I don't know if you've ever driven from the airport to the casino. It's two hours of just nothing. Like it's just forest and forgotten dreams and shit. And then the winds and then the Mohegan sun. So it's like, sorry, I'm cursing a lot. Um, I don't know. I just don't like being there. Uh, and at this point, I've already said too much to go back. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind like, of the strategy, right? This is where I'm at now. Uh, I don't know, bro. I think the UK should have kept it. Um, whatever. <laughs> um, and, and I know that you said uh, you don't want to rush uh, and you want to do kind of the AJ McKee route. Um, I, this is a bit of a tough question, but if you can put it maybe in terms of time or even fights, um, how, how long until we see you say with like one of the, the bigger names of the division? Uh, I'd give myself probably like next year or something like that. You know, um, I would, again, I don't put hard numbers on anything. Cause I've tried to do that every year. I've tried to be like, I'm going to get this many fights per year, whatever. And then like a guy drops out, a guy drops out again, day of fight, uh, COVID hits. I get COVID. So I always aim for something. And I usually don't necessarily get that number because of, um, extenuating circumstances. So at this point, I'm like, you know, I want to finish out this year. I want to get fights in this year to be healthy. And um, assuming everything's looking great, I'd love to uh, get a crack at someone better next year. But again, it's just the route I'm taking. I'm just continually fighting better and better guys. And uh, I want to stick to that. 
Yeah. And it sounds like Aaron Pico was a big learning lesson for you, at least the approach to his career at the very beginning, right? Phenomenal fighter, by the way. Yeah, I didn't like his blueprint going into his career. I love him. Mm -hmm. I think he's awesome. His style is awesome now that he's actually remember that he can wrestle, you know? Um, it's like a fucking truck. No, nah, dude, he's awesome. I love that guy. And um, I watched him wrestle when I was in high school. So, But I do not like how he went into his career originally. I like what he's doing now, uh, minus the shoulder shit. But, you know, uh, no, he's awesome. Got it. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Lucas. Brother. Sweet. Thank you.